Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading up about 185. We've got the Nasdaq up 179. S&Ps are up 23. And let's go over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, and kick this new year off the right way. And don't forget, folks, every trading day, you can listen to Steve, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Outstanding show. He also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get the newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You're going to see it right on the top row on the right-hand side. You just hit subscribe. You can get Steve's newsletter for $149 for one month. You get it for $6.95 for six months, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you can get it for the full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 at 33%. Bottom line, folks, do yourself a favor. Get over there. Get it. You enjoy it. You'll end up paying for it. Something doesn't work for you, guess what? You get your money back. You have everything to win, zero to lose. Steve Rhodes, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How would we get to 2022 so quickly? Oh, baby, man. It's scary. It's scary. Uh, it's There's yeah. no doubt. There's no yeah. doubt. What a, what a crazy New Year's. Really crazy Christmas, New Year's season. Yeah. Just was, just was so, I don't know, you know, it's got to be the same way. I, so I spent quite a bit of time traveling between Naples, Orlando, and, and obviously Delray Beach. And every time I drove past a, a testing center, lines were like miles long. Right. You know, just just a just a crazy. Uh, we yeah. ended up we ended up uh, changing our plans. You know, with with the great football that was on on New Year's Eve and everything, we're like, we'll we'll just stay home, uh, which which was nice. But in, and I love this weekend specifically because, you know, if you love football, between college football and the pros out there, by by the time I got to last night, the last game, I was kind of like, okay, I, I've I've had too much football. I did the same thing, man. I, I what happened last night? I, I'm saying to myself, okay, I, I think I best have something wrong with me because. <laughs> It started so early in the morning, folks, and all of a sudden it's 11 o'clock at night and it was just ending. I says, okay, man. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. I don't know if you saw it, but did you see Brady with that 97 yards in like two minutes? He had, he had no timeouts, 97 yeah. yards in two minutes, folks, and he won the game. It's like insane. This guy is just like over the top, man. I mean. Well, I, I sent a text message to a good friend of mine. We, we typically go down to the, to the Dolphins games. Yes. And we, we have it the last couple. But uh, I said to him, you know, maybe we ought to follow the playbook of Tampa Bay. Let's get rid of Tua and let's bring Aaron Rodgers in. Yeah. You know, let's, let's bring the old guys in that know how to. Yeah, no, that that really know how to win. Um, I mean, there there's something to be said for what you guys have done over in Tampa for sure. Oh, there's no doubt. We just get those. I mean, if the defense holds up, man, we're going to be there. That's I mean, yes. that's the bottom line. You know, absolutely. pretty amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, what do we got out here, Steve? Well. We're going to start with just simply the seasonal cycle. Uh, so over the last 86 years, we know that the Dow on average is topped out during the first week of January. If we look at an actual specific date, it would be January 6th, which I believe is Thursday of this week. So okay. it doesn't always happen to the day, but we're certainly in that cycle where we typically see both a top during the first week of January that then leads to a pullback into the end of January. And that's when typically we see a significant bottom for the entire year. So I've always mentioned to folks that are contributing to their retirement plans, uh, especially if they're looking at some type of tax deduction, don't wait until April 15th. Wait until January 30th or thereabouts to put that money in because there's a there's a good amount of movement between then typically and the April time frame. So this is our seasonal cycle. If we take a look at 2021, what we'll see is that the Dow topped on uh, January 7th. So that's this little red arrow back here. So following along with the uh, seasonal cycle makes a bottom January 29th. Crazy. Look at that, Look at that yeah. compared to, to know, the man. seasonal. And that seasonal cycle, folks, this was put together a couple oh. of years ago out here. So uh, and then the market went up, made a, a top in May, as it should, pulls back into the summertime, low into June. And so the seasonal cycle really in 2021 uh, worked very well. Uh, so um, let me just kind of get to, to this set of charts here. Now, the fall bottom formed on September the uh, 20th, which was a tad early. Typically, that's around the April or I'm sorry, the uh, middle of October. So this year, it happened to be around September uh, 20th. So what, what I do know is that certainly for 2021, the seasonal cycle worked very well. We're going to continue to follow this, Tom, into 2022. But my real question is, will 2022 usher in that same 
normal seasonal cycle pattern. And the reason that I ask that question is because if we take a look at, and you and I, we talked about this maybe a couple of weeks ago, if we take a look at the annual charts, the yearly charts for most of the U.S. indices, what we're going to see out here is that most of these form what I refer to as a TD9 count top. That's a Tom DeMarc uh, tool out here. It requires nine consecutive closes where each close of the current candle session is above the close four bars earlier. So in this case here, we're looking at the current bar versus four bars earlier. And it's kind of like running a marathon or like running, maybe you're in a marathon, but it's like running the sprint. And you just simply run out of gas by giving it all that energy. So the Dow has a TD9 count top, the S&P has a TD9 count top, the Russell, the Semiconductor Index, uh, the NASDAQ Composite, the New York Stock Exchange. So all of this just suggests extreme caution because of these yearly, um, because of these yearly TD9 count tops. Another reason I believe that we should be cautious is that we have volatility that has been rising for quite some time. I didn't realize this until I started working on this chart over the weekend. If we go back, now this is a weekly time frame chart, Tom, that we're looking at for this okay. volatility index. If we go back to the high, that uh, the top that took place in 2007, we can see that there was, an, I'm just looking at the yellow diagonal line, that we had rising volatility. Now that's typically what we'll see when we see some kind of a retracement, some type of a pullback, some type of a short-term or long-term top out here well take us back into the 2018 time period we can see that and this is just on a closing basis that we have that same rising bottoms pattern inside the spot volatility so this makes the hair on the back if i had any hair on the back of my neck really kind of stand up here so it says caution this little uh purple rectangular box shows for the most part the period of time over on the left where the spot volatility was above its 50 period exponential moving average. Since this is a weekly chart, it would be a 50-week uh, uh, exponential moving average. And once price is above that red line, right now, that's at about 1979, things can get rocking and rolling to the downside. So we have a pattern that is very similar to what we saw back in 2007 um, that's in place right now. And so that says another reason to be concerned out here. So the one conclusion that I will draw, whether this is going to be a significant top or not, is that volatility is going to continue to rise. And that's something that I think your ears love to hear, because what that means is we like likely have a at least a two-way market. Yes. If, if we have a one-way market, it'll be one way to the downside when price exceeds some of these levels out here. But otherwise, we have rising volatility, and that says really good for traders out there. So I think that's a real important chart. Now, if the markets do make a top this week, then the question becomes, what levels do we look at? Well, inside the ES Mini, it's very easy. Just take a look at the right-hand panel chart out here. That number is going to be 44.9650. During the entire year of 2021, all of the pullbacks found support at the bottom of these weekly profiles. So if we get a close below the bottom one of these weekly profiles, and the ES Mini again at 44.96, that's going to really suggest to you and I, or at least to me, that the markets are going to head lower and probably for longer than shorter, meaning at least a year out there. So we've got lots of reasons to be very cautious this week, maybe very telling. We'll certainly keep an eye on that 44.96.50 level, and uh, um, that's what I see as we take a look at the uh, markets out here. you got to love it. And folks, it's really easy to get Steve's newsletter. Just come over to our website at TFNN, you hit newsletters on the right-hand side. And uh, it's pretty amazing, Steve, how uh, these profiles can keep you long, huh? It is. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's yeah. nice to have a valuable tool like that. It really is. And, and Tom, I, I, I thank you for that because I didn't know about profiles until you brought the guys from Taz on. So no, absolutely. Listen, man, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.